Hello folks, welcome to my YouTube channel, Watercolor Impressions. For the last two weeks, we learned how to do one point and two point perspective and this week I want to continue the series and I want to do a three point perspective as well. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And uh, let's get started guys. Before we jump onto a painting, I want a quick demo how three point works. So it's kind of like a two point perspective, but there's a third point which can be at the top or the bottom based on how we want to create this perspective. And you could see I'm creating a line and I'm creating a point, a perspective point at the bottom. And you could see there's two point, a third point which connects with the bottom. And we can also create that cube based on this three point. So I'm gonna do the same exact same thing, but in a different angle, as you could see. And I'm also going to create another three point from uh, the two sides. And you could see I created a two point perspective just to them demo and the third point which is connecting at the top now it becomes a three point perspective and we also seeing from the top down view and uh, this kind of perspective commonly used in comic books so like personally i don't use in my artwork or in my painting because uh, this is just to uh, exaggerate perspective in comic books to show that uh, wide angles um, so that the characters can become a main point so now I took a reference and I created some vanishing points uh, on the left and on the right and you can also see the third vanishing point goes at the top. And this kind of vanishing point happens once you tilt the camera looking up or you are seeing it from the top down view when you are at the top of a building. So let's move on, let's uh, put some perspective lines and start painting. I will provide the drawing template and the perspective lines I showed you earlier and the reference as well in the video description and please feel free to download it so you guys can follow with me. So I'm throwing some perspective lines based on our reference. I'm trying to establish the corner of the building which is facing us. So I kind of create this cube and from there I will just uh, put some buildings and I'll go from there. And I also rearrange these buildings here and there uh, to have a little bit of a compositional element in our painting. And I'm not being careful when I'm doing this because this is just for a demo purpose as well as to show how three-point perspective works. And uh, being said that, I'm just uh, building the top part of the building first and I'll slowly come down. Now I'm going to be putting a lot of details at the top and as it comes on, it's going to be lesser and less details. And this also enhances a little bit of perspective in our painting as well as uh, really, you know, good world with painting as well. And this is the building I was talking about. Um, once I uh, start drawing this building, I noticed that uh, the corner of the building, I made it higher. So I have to accommodate the left side, uh, the tall vertical in our picture. So I'm going to move it around and I'm trying to uh, shorten it so that it kind of like comes in our painting. Because the verticals also uh, plays a really good role in any kind of painting you do. So once I'm happy with it, I'm just trying to uh, put some perspective lines and I'm also being aware of my two point perspective as well uh, when I'm doing this. And uh, as a beginner, as a beginner, if you want to start uh, or approach three point perspective, I highly recommend drawing some lines and start from there. Um, because like freehand uh, perspective takes a little bit of uh, experience to do. I also struggle with three point perspective because uh, personally I don't use uh, in any kind of painting or artwork I do because uh, three point perspective is mainly focused on uh, comic book art. So now uh, this is a technique you can also use in uh, any kind of painting you do in watercolors. So this is just to uh, block out the darker values in your references. So we can hang our watercolors on top of it. So I'll go and finish this. Once I finish this darks, I realized that uh, I didn't, uh, this is where your intuition comes as an artist because you have to take care of the major shape first. And I also messed a little bit of details in the front of the building. I persevere and I'll go with the vision and uh, what you can do. Uh, I'll just go in and let's see what you can come up with. So I started with the first wash for the cobalt blue at the top and uh, before it dries out, I'm going to introduce uh, the top uh, part of this uh, buildings and it has a little bit of a warmer tone with a uh, little bit of green in it. Even though it looks a little bit of darker now and it's gonna dry out and it's gonna fade out uh, because that's how watercolor works. And I'm trying to uh, uh, paint as fast as I can. And uh, at the top of the building, uh, I want to have a little bit of uh, framing so I'm going a little bit darker on top of the building just to frame those two verticals. 
so now uh, let's focus on the first wash of the building which is on the left hand side so it is a warmer tones so i'm using a lot of warmer tones in it and like if you can see uh, on the right hand side it is warmish tones but it is kind of like a little bit of uh, a lot of yellow ochre in it so i'm going to use yellow ochre and a little bit of amber i'm just going to paint as fast as i can uh, before when i started painting the first wash i tried to take my time but uh, that gave a lot of a uh, lot of inconsistency in my wash so i want to make sure that uh, i paint as fast as I can so that it kind of looks really good um, when I finish my first wash and there's two trees there and I'm just gonna put it there just to uh, have some little bit of uh, shadows which can be uh, cast on our building and at the bottom part uh, we don't see that much but I'm just going to make it up and make it a uh, little bit of abstract just to create a foreground so that it can uh, lead us into the painting so the first wash is done, um, let's go and add the shadows, I'll start from the left verticals and I'll bring the, the shadows all the way at the bottom and I'm also being aware of that um, building which is also on the light and the shadow and this also gives a little bit of uh, separation from the front part of the building as well. And uh, this is where and the top part has a little bit of cobalt blue in it and I'm all just, just blocking it, the clock. And this is where uh, the darker part, what we did in our sketch helps us. So wherever the shadow goes, it's easy to block in and it's easy to, uh, so it kind of like act as a map for us, like where exactly the shadow goes. For the windows, I will just use uh, any kind of uh, darker pigment and I will just block it wherever it goes. And I'll keep building this process, uh, still I'm happy with it. And when you do this um, windows and adding those uh, darker details, um, don't like overdo it. Because if you overdo it, overfill it, it doesn't look that good. Uh, when I started painting, uh, I always overdo this process because it's really fun to do. And you just keep on building it up and the next thing you know, there's thousands of um, windows in there with the wash covered everything in it. So now I'm adding the shadows for the another vertical and that's also a really great shape in our painting so I want to make sure that I get the shadows as accurate I can. Let's add the shadows on the right hand side of the building and uh, it's on the cooler side so I'm going to introduce a little bit of purple and a little bit of uh, cobalt blue in it and that will do and I'll just take this and uh, take under the trees as well as on the right corner of the building as well. As soon as we add the shadow, you could see um, the whole uh, painting came alive and everything started looking 3D. And I'm also adding the shadows uh, for the trees casting on the building as well. Like uh, when I started this sketch, uh, I took care of the major shape but I kind of missed the details in the front part of the building. And as they say, mistakes are the best teachers. I would have left it as it is, as flat, but I added the balcony at the end, so my vision changed and uh, so be it and uh, what I can I do and I'll just keep persevering and I'll just you know come up with the painting and I'm adding the darker tones for the trees and when doing trees you also try to add the three tones the light the mid tones and the darker tones at the same time you can also do it separately and it doesn't look uh, as fresh when you do it uh, consistently so this is the final step and as soon as we finish this I think uh, we can call this painting done so I'm talking about the shadows so the shadows started picking from the left to uh, right so I'll, I'll start with the left hand side and I'll also combine all the shadows from the building, from the trees and I'll also connect that uh, shadows on the other side as well. And there's going to be a little bit of darker tone at the bottom of the building because um, it is a bouncing light and it's on the darker side from the ground as well. So this is a little bit of design I put in the foreground just to take us to lead us into the painting. And this is the final frontier of any painting I do. Um, what I'm talking about is my uh, white paint. And uh, this is just to bring back uh, the eyelets. I, uh, I, I was trying to uh, do it, but uh, I left it out. And uh, I have a bad habit when I paint is to cover everything. And now I'm adding uh, a little bit of a uh, white flag. Uh, there's a flag uh, in our reference as well. And this is super tall, but I don't want to uh, destroy my wash, so I'm making it tiny. And now it's your turn. Uh, take my uh, reference, 
uh, drawing template and uh, do some exercise and uh, let's see what you can come up with. If you ended up doing it, please share it with me. Thanks again for watching this 3 point perspective painting with me. Let me know what you guys think about this video in the comment section. If you want me to cover any other subjects in watercolors, write me at watercolorimpressions at gmail.com or comment below. Before you go, hit the subscribe button so you guys can get weekly video updates from our channel. And please do share with your friends and family. And uh, good luck with your painting folks.